evening friends. So we're out for a little walk chasing a sunset. My app says there's something like a 56% chance maybe of a decent sunset tonight. So the last two or three nights have been like a 32% chance and I've had a little wander and I can see that it looked like it was reasonable. Um, but other people who hadn't got um, their vista obscured by buildings in town seem to get quite a nice sunset. So I've come out into the country a little bit. So um, I've got a better view of what's happening. It's quite cloudy, so it's more likely to be dramatic if the sun does come through a little bit. Um, and I've had a bit of a rubbish day, which I'll tell you about in a bit. But uh, yeah, let's fingers crossed for some some um, pretty colours. A little bit of drama. That's not the drama that I've had today. <laughs> See the hues are coming through. I think it's going to be nice. So, any eagle eyed viewers amongst you that may have watched a couple of my videos before, uh, my cycling ones, may recognise this from somewhere I come gravel cycling quite a bit East Stoke. Um, oh, it's beautiful, it's just beautiful. And it's there's a nice bit of flat that comes alongside the river and there's a bit of hill so you get to get up and see down into the valley so locally because it's quite a flat area you don't get to see an awful lot um, from a height vantage but this should be nice tonight if I don't get completely bitten to death by mozzies put long trousers on so we'll see So I've debated which way round to do this circular walk because there's this little bit I'm in now which is quite enclosed and quite remote. I didn't want to be coming down here when it was too dark. I've just passed a guy that's been out walking his dogs and again like I said in one of the previous videos there's always that thought. I've heard him drive away but there's always that thought. <laughs> is he just going to put his dogs back in and I'm going to hear footsteps on the path behind me. So. Uh, I have my trusty Swiss Army knife for protection, for any legal protection I can get in the UK. Oh, like hello. Um, but yeah, I decided to start off at this remote bit first. I, I didn't want to miss any dramatic views. I thought the sun might be going down as I'm crossing the fields here, which might be quite nice rather than coming the other way. And then the sun would be behind me. So it's nice to kind of come this way and actually watch it. Oh, it's such a beautiful walk. So my little drama for the day. I uh, take my wife to catch the train to work in the morning and uh, I dropped off this morning and got home. It's about just after seven and I live in an apartment, apartment with shared outdoor space and we've got a drive that's really long but it's uh, only kind of single width, so it's kind of first come, first serve. And when I left, my neighbour was already parked on the drive. And when I, so I, when I get home, I usually reverse into the drive to turn around and pull back onto the road if, if my neighbours are on the drive. And for whatever reason this morning, I knew that she was on the drive and I went to reverse to turn around and I just kept reversing and I reversed right into her car. And, you know, it's one of those moments where you think, what the hell is in my head? Like, I've got a rear facing camera. I've got uh, sensors all around the car. And it was just one of those moments where, and it kind of really threw me for the day a little bit. Like, I've not really trusted myself to come out again until, uh, don't know what that was, until I had to go and pick my wife up again. Um, just that kind of sense of this, it was such a, stupid stupid mistake like reversing into a car that I knew was on the drive without even checking when I've got all these sensors like I just don't trust myself to get out again so it's taken me a little bit of time to get some confidence back up and then we've had uh, 
stresses because my kids going off to uni not weekend coming but the weekend after and we've had a right rigmarole sorting out accommodation um i think i've kind of touched on the fact that she's got some like additional needs she's just been diagnosed with adhd and she has sensory processing disorder so it's not practical or it's not really possible for her to be in student halls where she's sharing um a, like kitchen and bathroom space with eight ten other people that she doesn't know um, she really struggled, she's always struggled from being really little with um, eating with certain textures and smells and, and food is, until we've kind of understood and uh, tried to become more kind of tolerant and understanding. It's, it's been a real frustration for a large part of her life, bless her. So, um, yes, yeah, as soon as people's results started coming through a couple of weeks ago, all the accommodation that wasn't digs, uh, wasn't holes, just was getting snapped up. Um, and then... Uh, we, we found somewhere, went and had a look around, seemed like it was going to be the perfect place. Then we got the um, copy through this morning of the deeds and stuff, or the, the tenancy kind of draft, um, of what we were told the bills were going to be included. And it said that bills were extra, so we're, and the, the price of the rent had gone up 45 quid as well. So it's like nearly £900, well, pretty much £900 a month plus bills. We're like, we just can't afford that. That's nearly twice my rent. So anyway, it was a mistake, bills are included. So, but that's been a whole stress and sort of trying to find money for a month up front and a month, um, you know, the, the month that she's moving in. So like nearly two grand to put down. It's, uh, yeah, in a cost of living crisis, it's difficult. So yes, they're my stresses for today. And I wanted to get out, probably not <laughs> remotely interested. I'm just waffling on, I think. Like I've said to some of you before, I think sometimes these videos are more of a vlog in terms of I, I used to journal a lot and I actually shredded all my journals at one point because I thought there's a lot of personal stuff in there that I've kind of vented about and if and when something happens to me and those diaries are left, I don't want anybody going through them, um, reading things that are maybe not in context, not how I feel anymore, whatever. So um, doing something like this for me is cathartic and it's there's a bit of a creative side to it as well which I enjoy so sometimes my ramblings are just me kind of processing my own thoughts anyway I'm going to stop rambling and enjoy a bit of this uh, beautiful walk just look at the colour of that sky isn't that amazing So, I don't know whether you can see up there. That's where we're going, up the hill. But we go kind of down here, round the edge of the field, along a little bit, and then up, back round into the car. Following the little uh, yellow pole there. You used to be able to get down the side of the field, which I would prefer, to be entirely honest, on safety grounds, but especially when I'm not on my bike. There we are, at the river. Some right revving going on, some boy races somewhere. Hopefully not coming down here. Come from in there. And we're heading up that way. So we just come around here and then heading up this hill that I currently have the QOM on. So it's a bit of a tough walk up. So it doesn't look anything on here, but as soon as you as soon as you turn that corner, you're straight up here. And it's uh, 
think it maxes out at something like 15% gradient, but it's an average of about nine, I think, 10. So I'll probably be getting a little bit of a sweat on. The only problem around this area, and I don't know whether it's because of the fields or the water or the fact that they have sheep or a combination of all those things, the, uh, there tends to be a lot of flies, horse flies, mosquitoes. Um, oh, see the colour coming out now. Get a better view from the top. But yeah, don't want to hang around in one place too long. There isn't much of a breeze tonight, so that will mean there's nothing blowing the mozzies away. I also apologise for the sound quality. I need to um, sort out getting something to hold my camera with. I had a ring on the back, but it was rattling all the time and then it fell off. Um, but the way I have to hold it to not get my hand in front of the camera lens means that I'm covering up the microphone. So apologies if the sound quality is crap. I uh, will try and do better. Right and get up here. Tell me that's not stunning. You'll not pick it up on the camera but there's a real kind of haze and mist hanging over down the uh, villages in the valley. Um, it was really misty this morning I think because it's cooling off in the morning but still super super warm in the day and at night. Um, Oh, we're getting some little uh, mosquitoes now. Let's get a move on. It will forever be a shame that video doesn't ever pick up what your eye can see. All the kind of haze and stuff over the houses and fields. Sometimes there's just nowhere better to be. I kind of like the solitude, although I tried to convince, well, I didn't con try to convince, I asked my wife if she wanted to come and she was quite clear that she did not. Um, but yeah, it's quite nice to actually have the solitude. I, uh, I don't mind my own company at all. gives you plenty of time. I don't know whether any of you guys do it where like part of going through things in your mind you kind of play out conversations that you might have, things that you might say to people, things that you should have said to people. Um, a bit kind of like writing letters to somebody that you're never going to send. Oh, car coming. Yeah, so what I was saying, I would say before I was interrupted, but everybody knows how uh, cringy it is to have people see you vlogging. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of nice to have that solitude to process your thoughts. Um, and I, I've always found it in terms of kind of creative space, um, because I write music and I write songs, that I kind of make sense of some of some of that so sometimes I don't, I don't necessarily come up with songs or melodies uh, like musical melodies I do that at my instrument but in terms of lyrics and lyric ideas and phrases and sentences or a theme but quite a lot of time that happens when you're just sort of out thinking through these situations um, and then the ideas start to come to mind so I've always found it a really good kind of space creatively just to kind of even if you're not drawing direct inspiration from the things that you're seeing, um, just having that stillness and that solitude to not be distracted by other things that you might have going on at home. Don't know whether any other creatives out of you out there kind of find that. Getting a right nice orange glow now. So sunset chasing is a little bit of a passion of mine. Um, I do like sunrises as well when it starts to get into winter 
and they, they're a little bit later in the, the morning. Um, and because uh, we've not really had any like really dramatic, not in this area, sun, sunrises or sunsets. Uh, we had loads last year, um, usually around December, January time, there are quite a lot of good ones, but I don't really recall there being anything too amazing the uh, year that's just gone. But yeah, I think one of the things that I learned is, is sort of trying to get your timing right. So looking at the at time that the sun goes down, what I was doing to start with was getting to the point that I wanted to view the sunset at the point at which the sun went down, thinking that would be when it starts to set, but in actual fact, that's when it disappears and you've missed it. So it's getting out early enough that you can get to the place that you can see it setting. But the other thing um, that I hadn't realised until I'd gone home a number of times and then realised that the sky had got really beautiful after I'd left is um, that as it continues to set, the sky continues to get pink and orange and you, you kind of get the colours that are coming out across the clouds now. So quite often um, the more dramatic sunsets are when you've got the cloud because you get all of that reflection off it. So. It's been a little bit of a uh, learning curve, but I think I'm starting to kind of understand where I need to be and how long I need to allow to see what I want to see. It's pretty special every time and um, feel very privileged to be in a position where I can get out and walk and get to where I want to be and see it all. I'm going to take a second. Once I get to the end of this path down here, it's pretty much on the main road back to the car, so I'm not going to film anything down there because it'll be noisy and there'll be cars coming backwards and forwards. But this, this is the kind of special bit that I wanted to see and I wanted to share a little bit with you guys. So if I don't film any more, which I probably won't now, um, thank you for listening to me waffle. I will be back on the bike at some point. I have pulled my shoulder, well, pulled a muscle in my back um, that's kind of under my shoulder blade. Um, when I tried riding my bike at the weekend, it aggravated it and it's, it's been really quite painful. So I am going to give that a break. The event that I was signed up to, the Gravel Peak Epic on the 16th of September, Glorious Gravel have graciously um, changed my entry to the Sherwood Forest Gravel X um, in October. So I won't be doing the gravel, the, the peaks gravel, but I will, I will be doing the one in October all being well. It'll give me a little bit more time to get back on the bike and train and have less going on with the university stuff. So. So this is the walk, if anybody's interested. I wouldn't bother coming out for it if you're not local, it's a, like a bit of a 5k loop. But if you are fairly local to Newark, East Stoke, then uh, I recommend coming and giving it a whirl. You can't really see because my camera is designed to increase the uh, light when it's too dark so it's actually a lot darker than you're seeing on screen um, I definitely made the right choice to do the circuit this way around and uh, as we've lost the light and the street lights have come on I'm coming down the main road and I've talked about walking being an act of mindfulness at the moment there's this real strong smell of something burning probably something burning in the field because I can't imagine anybody's got a fire going in their house at this time of year. It's like nearly 30 degrees Celsius today. But the smell reminds me of uh, making barbecues on holiday in France when I was a kid. Oh, good times, nice memories. So it's getting properly dark now and I know you can't see me that's been 5k on the nose taking me just over an hour with my dawdling and taking pictures and video so it's the end of another one good night folks see you next time